So I ordered a big bore kit for the XR150. It's supposed to take it up to 222 cc's. Class side plastics, the seat gotta come off. I think the tank has to come off. The exhaust has to come undone. Valve cover has to come off. This is the head, the head has to come off. And the cylinder is below the head here. So I think the stock piston is like 56, 57 mil. And the one that I have is punched out to 70 millimeter. So we're pretty much gonna have to take the thing apart. <laughs> so the side cover just has 10 mil here and then it pops off front and rear. Then we can access the seat bolts. Okay, side covers come off pretty easy. And then the seat bolts are right here. So there's one on each side. And then the seat sort of just slides back a little bit and comes off. All right, we got the seat off. And looks like there's only one bolt on the tank, but the plastics are fastened down here. So there's probably a good idea to take the plastic off because the plastic's fastened to a rail there. And then looks like there's only one bolt on the tank and the fuel line, of course. She's naked. Got no plastics. Looks like looks like a different kind of motorcycle. <laughs> Oof. I just put a fuel filter on there recently. Over on this side, I shut the fuel off just now, and I'm gonna disconnect the line here, somewhere between here and the carburetor. And then I should be able to pull the tank off. Got this bolt out. Well, there's the fuel tank. There was a secondary, like a breather tube or vent tube. So I had to undo that as well. Gonna have to get the valve cover off. Maybe some of this stuff might have to come out of the way. So I've Disconnected the exhaust, there's just two nuts here and a flange and I loosened the uh, mid clamp down there. So I think that's enough to get the cylinder off. I think there's two bolts on the valve cover, I think. One on this corner and one on the opposite corner. This tube might have to come off. I'm not sure how high I can go here. Okay, we got the carburetor off. Actually, I just got it just hanging there by the throttle cable, pretty much. Took the two bolts, two nuts off here, and the fuel line was already undone, so that was pretty easy. And I took the valve cover off. I had to wiggle it a little bit because of that exhaust tube or whatever, but got that off. So now I'm going to have to check the timing marks over there before I disassemble and probably have to loosen off the timing chain tensioner over on the other side there. Okay, so here's what I got. I turned, I took these two plugs out, turned the crank and watched for timing marks in here. And there's two dots, two dots there. And they seem to line up with these two dot with these two lines on the cam sprocket. So I'm just gonna leave it right there. And then when I reassemble it, I'll just reassemble it the same way. Well, there's the cylinder head. So I used the the big socket here to hold it and a little eight millimeter wrench to take off the cam gear. There's the cam gear there. So all the rockers and camshaft are still in the head. 
and uh, yeah that just allowed me to slacken off the chain there's two little bolts here and four big they look like bolts but they actually thread onto these studs and yeah just a little bit of wiggle and that come out it was a little bit tight coming past the exhaust stud in this little bracket right here in the top but she comes out of there so we're getting into the we're getting into the cylinder now it should it should basically lift off have to watch the timing chain and guides I pulled the cylinder off of there and set it down beside the replacement cylinder might need might need these in the new one but anyway so yeah I'll probably compare the pistons side by side but there's quite a difference there and I'm just gonna have to knock out the wrist pin here There's a clip, clip that holds the wrist pin on either side. So I'll have to take that out and then the new piston can go on here. So there's the old piston there. And this is the new 70 millimeter piston. Now I'm told that I might have to take a little bit of material off the bottom here. So I might have to do that for clearance purposes. But that's quite a difference there in size. Where they said take a little bit off the bottom of the piston right there. So I assume that has to clearance the crank. So, I went ahead and did what the interwebs people said to do. I feel like I've got it down close to factory. It was sticking up quite a bit more than the factory amount like this, but I feel like I've got it close. There's still a lot of material there, but I might just try that. Okay, I managed to squeeze the new piston back on there. This side says in, that's your intake valve. It's a little bit bigger than your exhaust valve. So the intake, the carburetor's back here. So that's your intake in and your exhaust is at the front. So there's the piston. I couldn't find any uh, retaining clips for the wrist pin. So I had to reuse, had to reuse them. The old ones, but they work. So I got the piston rings on there and uh, I tried to orient, orientate them opposites. So I think I'm just about ready to slide the cylinder on there pretty soon. Maybe put some oil in it first. It's funny, it says 149 on the outside, but it's obviously punched out. It's obviously bigger than that. This is the 149 head here. So yeah, that, uh, that one almost fit inside of this one. Ta-da! Um, 70 millimeter piston on the 2024 XR. Can't call it an XR150 anymore because I'm pretty sure it's XR225 now. So 
here's the old piston. Let's set it in there. Look how much bigger the new one is. So I got the piston rings squished down. I just sort of put it on a bit of an angle and I push the other side in with a screwdriver and drop in the compression rings one at a time. The oil ring's pretty easy. <laughs> Make sure your guides are in the right place. I just drop this one here back in and I got the chain hanging out. So timing mark is still not moved. It's still in the same place. I guess I can put the head gasket on. We got a new head gasket here. Okay, I feel like I'm making progress. Got the head set on there and the guides and chain hung up until I can get the cam gear back on. Cam gear is right here and tensioner will go in after that. And yeah, I'm pretty sure the timing marks haven't moved. Crank hasn't moved. I think I put it in gear and uh, so far so good. So I got the cam gear on, torque the head bolts down, put these two in here. I put in the timing chain tensioner here. Put that back in. And I put in the, the ratchet here and crank it over and it goes all the way around. So that's a good sign. And the valve lash seems not too bad, so I might not even mess with that at all. I might just see if it'll run. But first, carburetor, gas tank, valve cover, all that stuff's got to go back on. Okay, I'm starting to button things up here, and uh, there's the original cylinder and carb there. So I put a 27 millimeter carburetor. turn it hopefully this carb will be okay but good news is it runs it might help if you hook up the fuel line to the carburetor you big dummy That's better. Just went for a test ride and wow. There's definitely a lot more torque there. You can click it into fifth gear now around 60 and it's got enough torque to carry it at a lower RPM, which is kind of nice. Um, I haven't really tried the top speed or hill climbs yet. It used to lose speed on the hill climbs, but it feels like there's more torque there now. So I think it'll probably hold its own, but I have to get it out on the road to see the, I think the top speed is probably gonna be about the same. It was always right around 100 kilometers per hour 
or 60 miles per hour but overall i'm happy with the big bore kit there we just went for a good little ride so give her some break-in procedure there it's just hit a thousand kilometers so i should probably change the oil anyway 1100 kilometers apparently but the big bore kit helps a lot in the uh low and mid torque for sure check them out this is Harley